And welcome back to another Inktober with Ram Dragon. <clears throat> I think I mostly fixed the uh, focus issue we've been having. I hope uh, I hope it comes across much clearer now. Might need a little bit more adjusting. Yeah, something like that. Um, and this is the frustrating part. Give me just a moment. I thought I was ready, but not quite all the way ready for live yet. Give my uh, camera just a little bit of a boost. The issue I was having was it. Uh, I was between focal stops with with my camera. <laughs> And it wasn't, it just wasn't, uh, just wasn't hitting the focus all the way. So there we go. Looks like I'm nice and squared and centered. And you'll see the tape on my board here. This was my uh, uh, previous uh, indicators of where the camera limits were. Uh, they're no longer accurate. So we'll ignore those today. And we will get on with a new drawing. And if you're just joining, a little bit about me. I'm, I've uh, been an artist for 25 years. However, I have never been a professional artist. And despite the fact that uh, I spent that much money at school getting a degree in fine art. <laughs> I have actually been working in uh, IT and various uh, technical fields for the last few years. So, let's get on with it. Same equipment that we've been using. Um, give me a moment. I'm going to give this a quick sharpen. Can't uh, draw with a dull pencil. Well, e e I could draw with a dull pencil, but uh, dull pencils make dull drawings. That's better. Now, a lot of artists, I see this mistake frequently. Excuse me. This is a, a, a 2B pencil. It's a little bit softer. It's uh, it's more similar to a uh, uh, an HB pencil or a number two pencil. Uh, it's a little bit softer, but the mistake that a lot of artists make is they will sharpen it to a uh, a dangerously sharp point. And I don't know if it'll if you can see here. Do I have? Yeah, I've got full depth of field. So. Uh, you might be able to see it, you might not. It's uh, not fully sharpened. I mean, you, you saw me tapping it with my finger. I'm not in danger of impaling myself. With a soft pencil, you don't want it super sharp. <laughs> and even even with my hard pencil, this here is my 4H. This is about as hard as I like to draw with. Um, I still don't get the pencil super, super sharp. Uh, it's easier to just turn the pencil a little bit if I need a sharper line. But... With that out of the way, let's get on to today's topic. What just happened? And I have autofocus on again. There we go. Give me just a moment to fix that, because that's just not acceptable. Uh, it's a, it's something that I see frequently in uh, in a lot of podcasts or even YouTube videos. People will um, there's my webcam. People will keep their autofocus on, but the camera doesn't know what you're trying to uh, 
what you're trying to do. There's my autofocus. And it's going to stay at this focus level <laughs> instead of, and, and that's the that's the big problem when, when especially when you're doing like an overhead shot like this, and your hands move in and out, the camera tries to track the back of your hand, and then you lose focus on the drawing, um, which is why I like to keep the autofocus off. And I wish more people would. I wish more people would keep their autofocus turned off. I get more distracted watching the camera go in and out of focus. Uh, let's see. We've wasted a whole seven minutes with uh, focus. Let's let's get on with the drawing. Frail. There's there is one thing I always think of when I think of frail, and what immediately comes to mind is you know an old person in bed. They've got the tubes hooked up. They've got the um, maybe they're in a wheelchair. They're they're old. They're falling apart. They're about to die. I didn't want to do something so obvious. So I think today I'm going to continue with my theme from yesterday. Yesterday's theme was. Uh, Excuse me. Yesterday's theme was Enchanted, and I drew a uh, a D and D character I used to play. I think today I'm going to draw one of my favorite and least favorite video game characters. And the way that this character is typically drawn. is under a hood and you might know where I'm going with this already before I forget I need to silence my phone there we go and you might know where I'm going with this already if you're uh, thinking along the same lines I am, but uh, without saying anything, I'm just going to continue this drawing, and I just need to look up something real quick. Uh, looking up... That's what I'm looking for. Okay. I couldn't remember if this character had a cape over the cloak or if it was just a cloak. Now, I've had people asking me about uh, the way that I hold my pencil, and the reason why I hold my pencil this way is uh, I do come from a fine art background, um, and holding it this way gives me the ability to make nice sweeping arcs, um, and I can change the diameter of those arcs very easily, very quickly, and they're actually very accurate because I'm using my wrist as the pivot. But... Uh, more than that, I'm using my entire arm. I, you'll see when I'm drawing, I'm usually not moving my wrist much. I'm using my entire arm to draw. And it's just a, a fine art uh, habit. Um, many fine artists draw in, in similar ways. I'm going to move this seam in a little bit. Go and we'll get. And this is at this point more of a gesture than a uh, than a real drawing. Um, so we'll get some. Uh, let's get, actually let's get some body shape in here. We don't want to go too amorphous. What would be the point of that?
and I think I was going with I was going with video game proportion previously, but I do believe I'm going to stretch this character out a little bit just to give us some uh, some fun. Something to work with, something uh, a little more detailed. And for anybody who plays Dungeons and Dragons, if you know <laughs> this particular video game, you probably know the Dungeons and Dragons story. You probably have one of your own of the dungeon master accidentally killing the entire party and it almost always starts with <clears throat> it almost always starts with the death of the cleric let's get a little more dynamic in the pose here I typically do uh, very static poses, and one of the reasons for that is I've never uh, really developed a lot of confidence in in my art, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this uh, Inktober uh, exercise. I want to be able to develop a lot more uh, confidence in my in my art, which would then lead to more uh, uh, actually drawing quicker, finishing drawings more quickly, but uh, also more dynamic drawings that I can add to my portfolio. I've been a fine artist for uh, 25 years, and you know, making 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 paintings. Uh, I am an airbrush artist. I uh, have done comic books. Uh, I haven't published my own comic books, but I have worked in uh, background art. Um, line cleanup uh, for publication uh, for uh, a comic book that was actually being republished. We, uh, the studio that I was at got uh, tasked, actually the artist at the studio I was at, <laughs> got contracted to do a uh, recolor of uh, a comic book for reprinting and uh, since he had a bunch of us little pukes hanging around um, I got to work on some of the line art cleanup. Actually, I did almost all the line art cleanup. Um, and a little bit of the background drawings. And one of the reasons why I say a little bit of the background drawings is, uh, you might have heard me mention before, if, you've, if you're following me on YouTube, uh, if you're just joining me uh, today for the first time, um, you might not have heard the story before. But uh, I am uh, colorblind. I am a moderate protan. And what that means is a lot of reds and greens look exactly the same to me. <laughs> Which means the most difficult color in the world is skin tone. Well, uh, I got some skill uh, built up while I was working at that studio of faking the, uh, the colors. And since graduating school, actually being in school, learning fine art, I uh, did learn a lot of digital hacks for uh, figuring out color. And one of those hacks, the, the easiest one to do, is just use a photo reference and, and color pick off the photo reference. I know what people look like. I know what uh, shade or uh, uh, lighting I'm going for. And I can usually find an image that has a similar, similar lighting, skin, similar skin quality and uh, uh, on Google really quickly. And I use that as my color picking palette. And I'll, obviously for comic books or, or uh, cartoony illustrations, I'll color pick from that picture and then I'll, uh, excuse me, and then I'll uh, saturate it a little bit. And 
don't want to get too detailed here, and I think I'm spending too much time on uh, on a little bit of shape that's going to be ultimately covered up. Oh, let's, uh, yeah. And this character's almost always in a skirt, so let's, uh, get that going. And again, I apologize for the silence. I, I, I find feet to be a particularly difficult shape. There we go. And really only because I don't practice enough. And I think some of you have uh, started to guess already which character this is. I'm just looking up the a staff topper here. Um, that's one that I particularly like and I've used before. Um, there we go. And if you're familiar with the uh, Final Fantasy series, you might start to recognize White Mage really quickly here. And why would I pick White Mage for Frail? Actually, let's turn her head a little more this way. Get that tilt out. Now, normally I'd be doing this with a much, much harder pencil. <laughs> uh, I think uh, if you've been following me on YouTube, you'll notice a few days ago I switched to my 2B pencil from my uh, uh, 4H pencil only because my, my sketch lines, um, the quality of my sketch lines, weren't showing up on the camera. So... <laughs> For, for anybody to follow along, I have to make a little bit darker of a line. And even some of these lines aren't showing up very well. But uh, we'll, we'll work with what we got here. So we'll get this in here. And uh, I like to add a, a bit of a globe in the center of this staff topper. There we go. See, I can hold my pencil normally. <laughs> I know some of you are doubting.
You know, I want to put some hair in this hood. I don't remember really White Mage's hairstyle. It was kind of short, wasn't it? In the original Final Fantasy game, it never really showed. Um, oh well, we'll we'll stick some hair in here uh, anyway. There we go, and I'm actually going to skinny up the chest a little bit just because White Mage, in my mind, is kind of the epitome of a glass shield. Put a little bit of a shoulder muscle on there, let's get rid of that. I'm going to start taking some of these... Uh, dark lines out, just knock them back a touch. I'm not uh, using a lot of pressure on my eraser. I just want to kind of clear up a little bit and get back down to paper and some areas where I have uh, scribble going through. There we go. up the silhouette over there. Let's uh, get this cape going and probably only bring it down to here. Let's get some uh, indication for eye shadows going in here. And I like to build shadows up this way um, rather than, I know um, in, in manga style you would kind of start with the eyes and then build the whole face around it. But I don't typically draw manga style. And one of the reasons for it is uh, I do have a more Western comic book background. I mentioned I worked on line art and, and uh, line art cleanup and uh, background for comic book reprints. And they were, uh, they were 80s comic books uh, being re republished. And that was kind of the world where I came from when I when I entered into uh, into fine art. Um, I was actually going to uh, do comic books. That was my my goal for a long time. And it wasn't until many years later, when I was in college, that I was exposed to uh, uh, mangas. I had been familiar with uh, anime and anime styles uh, for many years as a child. I mean, you, you can't really grow up in the 80s and 90s without being exposed to anime in the U.S. Um, I mean, geez, Transformers and uh, Robotech and... Gundams were coming out at the time, and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, well, not Z in the in the eighties, but you know what I mean. Uh, Dragon Ball was out at the time, and that was 
that was getting rebroadcast in the in the states um, a little bit, and it was uh, kind of just uh, it caught up in the noise in the cartoon noise of uh, childhood for me. So I can't say I was ever really influenced heavily by by anime as a child. Um, became more so as an adult. <sighs> Something's going on with this mouth. <sighs> and even today, a lot of the artists that influence me the most are uh, webcomic artists, and many of them have developed their own distinctive styles and not really uh, not really heavily influenced by uh, manga themselves. Uh, Howard Taylor comes to mind. Now there's there's a guy who has a very unique uh, style of art uh, which comes from having uh, absolutely no art background. And I don't say that to sound like I'm insulting the guy. I mean, it li literally, he was a computer programmer before starting uh, his webcomic um, and becoming a professional artist. His his art style is very much self-directed uh, from an early stage. And if you look at the stuff he's doing now, his... Uh, I don't need to make those lines dark. They're going to be inked. His, uh, his current uh, run of comics... Um, when he does when he does other work, he uses the exact same style of art, uh, and he has done. He's worked on uh, several other projects as a uh, as a as an artist doing illustrations for uh, campaign settings, and he's done illustrations for books and not just his own. And that was that's something that he's uh, he's doing more and more. As uh, as time goes on, he's being recognized as a very distinctive artist, and one of the reasons is because his art style is so very distinctive. So yeah, I don't want to sound like I'm I'm insulting anybody when I say he has no art background. I simply mean that he is. He is very self-directed. Um, nobody can really look at his art and say, oh, he draws like X, <laughs> because he really doesn't. He, he doesn't draw like anybody else, because he has developed uh, his own technique for uh, coming up with images, and I've watched him draw. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't draw that way. And the only reason I, I couldn't draw the way that he does is because he's solved for problems from a uh, the perspective of a, a computer programmer. And I was actually taught by artists, so my um, solving, the way that I solve those same problems, is a very um, art-centric method of, uh, of solving I almost forgot she has these big poofy sleeves. Let's, uh... Actually, I'm going to move that sleeve up a little bit just because I want it to hang way down here. And this one, I want it to hang way, way down. Actually, I'm going to swing this one out a little bit. We're in motion. There we go. And she usually has a, a bow or something here. And 
white mage is an adult female so let's indicate some uh, uh, there we go do want to indicate some of the shape on her chest there just because like I said she is an adult woman but she wears baggy robes so we're not going to indicate too much there we're not going to go too much farther actually I think that's all we're going to do on the pencil sketch we're going to move right into the ink and we'll do some of the refining in ink and this one might require some erasing once I finish the ink we'll we'll see how it goes uh, are we still centered my uh, marks aren't uh, accurate anymore. And I have been noticing I, I move my, uh, my sketch pad as I draw. So if you want to join me in these uh, live broadcasts, I do take these as I broadcast live on Twitch, um, twitch.tv slash ramdragon. Um, I, I am doing these on a live broadcast. If you'd like to join me and let me know when my drawing has gone off the page, uh, that would be helpful. But uh, let's go on to... Well, which one? Let's go with this one. Ooh, I'm actually getting a... Is this the pen I had the other day? I'm getting a much better line out of this one than I was getting the other day. All right. Well. Small miracles. I'm going to move this finger up just a touch, separate it from the rest of the hand. So that I can get a nice dark uh, line there. There we go. And this is a 0.5, which is a lot thicker than I would typically do this kind of uh, inking with. And to be completely honest with y'all, the only reason I'm using this one is... Uh, I haven't dug out my other art supplies. <laughs> Where is another art supply I haven't dug out? I thought it was over here on the table. All right, well, business card straight edge. Now, I don't typically like doing a straight edge this way because um, it's too easy to cover up the artwork you're working on and uh, make a mistake go through it um, which is why I inked the hand prior to uh, what's going on here prior to the staff because I'm able to uh, there we go because in this way I'm able to see my stops and starts And this line isn't going to end up too super straight. By the time I finish inking it, I am going to go over it with the uh, with the brush pen. But at least I'll have a nice straight um, guide to go by.
here we go. And I should pull out my circle template for this uh, this type of thing. And I was talking about uh, how different artists solve different problems, and Howard Taylor comes from a very uh, uh, computer engineering background. And the way that he solves for uh, blocking out his frames when he uh, when he draws his characters is he starts with his blank paper and he puts spheres all around it to indicate the characters heads but then he puts in all of his uh, as far as I understand I could be totally off I've, I've watched um, some of I, I've followed his channel for years I've been following Schlock Mercenary since uh, oh, 2000, maybe 2001, but uh, very early on in his uh, webcomic career. And uh, he occasionally posts behind the scenes stuff. There we go. And it looks like the way that he, uh, his workflow is uh, that he he starts out by blocking in the, the character's heads, but he uses a circle template, and he puts in all the circles first. Then he puts in his word bubbles. Then, like he literally, I don't know if he does it this way anymore, he probably doesn't, he's found a, a better digital way by now. But back about 10 years ago when he was... Um, publishing, and this is the mistake I was talking about, when he was uh, showing these behind-the-scenes things that he was doing, um, he would print out all of his dialogue on uh, printer paper, and he would, he would write it all in Word, print it on printer paper, and then uh, take those uh, printed sheets And literally cut out the word bubbles and paste them to his uh, his artboard that he was working on. And it's a very unique way of of solving the the problem of blocking a character and making sure that your uh, word bubbles aren't covering up significant artwork, which uh, Western comics has a huge problem with uh, artists just drawing what they draw and then uh, by the time it gets out of the inker and through the editor the word bubbles have been covered up and so a lot of the work a lot of the hard work and sometimes very important details even still in modern comics get obscured by those uh, by those word bubbles but he puts those word bubbles in first. He puts all the heads where he wants them on the frame. He puts the word bubbles in. Then he sits there and uh, futzes with it until it works. Until you can get everything on there without uh, covering up anything very important and significant. And uh, it's just not a way that I can solve <laughs> the same the same issues. Um, as I said, coming from a Western comic background, I, I tend to think of art first and composition and uh, all of the other things. Are, are secondary. The uh, art tends to tell the story rather than 
the words, but uh, you know, graphic novels, graphic art, graphic uh, comics are a combination of the drawing and the words. And I'm getting into shading detail here a little bit early. I should uh, back off a little bit, but I kind of wanted to leave a reminder of uh, to myself of how this is going to go. And again, very different from uh, anime. The eye is not fully indicated here. I've indicated some dark spots, the bottom of the iris. And this is going to look a little bit weird until I get the, uh, the full shading done. But let me clear this up a little bit so you can see what's going on. There we go. So yeah, the, the whole eye doesn't get an outline, just kind of the, the dark spots of the eye. And that iris is a little bit on the large side. I should, uh, I should bring that down, but let's, let's indicate the middle of the eye a little bit more. And with this, with a drawing this small, that's uh, kind of difficult. And there's a nose that's kind of halfway in between what uh, most people would consider Western and anime. So let's, uh, hair, yeah, I was going with hair and the hair goes behind the, uh, cape there. There we go. A little more wrinkles just to indicate that this is part of the same garment. And I forgot to uh, sketch in a detail. Let me check real quick. Uh, Nope, I didn't. I, I'm good. So as I was saying before, um, the prompt for this uh, October, Inktober, is uh, frail. And anybody who's ever played Dungeons and Dragons knows immediately why the cleric is the frail one. <laughs> Probably more so than the than the wizard in most parties. And I don't believe I've ever been in a in a D and D campaign where we ended up with a TPK, a total party kill, that didn't start with the cleric dying. And it, it always starts with the cleric dying. Once the cleric dies, the party's boned at that point. And in Final Fantasy, it was kind of the same way with your... Uh, with your white mage. If white mage dies, the party's hosed.
So you might wonder why I'm indicating shadow in these triangles. And the reason for that is because uh, they are red. Obviously, they're, they're red in the video game art. They're supposed to be red. But can't really show red in a black and white drawing. So I'm indicating that it is darker than the palette around it. which should get the same point across. There we go. And hair gets shadows. And I learned pretty early on a mistake that I had made when I started drawing comics really early is uh, when shading hair, the cross hatching doesn't really read that well. So usually when you see me render hair, I uh, typically try to use solid blocks rather than uh, gradients in my ink. And I know other artists have different ways of doing it. Uh, this is what I found works best for me. Yeah, yesterday, if you joined me yesterday on uh, YouTube or watched the replay, a uh, few people are watching the replays on Twitch, which uh, is good. It means I'm getting a little bit of traction. Um, I don't remember where I was going with the beginning of that sentence. Wow, I really lost that entire thought. <laughs> I am, whoo, you know what, I blame that on not enough caffeine, not enough caffeine in the morning. So there's the hood casting a shadow on top, and that shadow is going to blend in with the inside of the hood here. And actually, these shadows are going to be continuous because even white catches a shadow. And again, you've caught me getting into uh, too much detail too early on. Let's go ahead and finish uh, finish the figure here.
I think sometimes uh, White Mage has a red belt, but I'm not certain. I'm going to give the skirt a belt. I know usually she has floor-length robes and just kind of looks like a triangle with a with arms. <laughs> and a lot of that has to do with the limitation of early 8-bit video games. Get some feeling back in my fingers here. So what's on top? This uh, edge of the skirt here. Where am I going? Right here. And right there. And the robe does get a hem. So I'm going to add a hem to this uh, skirt here. And the hem has the same triangles on it that the hood has. There we go. Ooh, I should start cooking up some uh, yerba mate for these. I uh, find it difficult to uh, concentrate or even hold a normal conversation without the caffeine, but uh, I don't drink coffee. I can't actually stand the smell of it, which kind of makes uh, mornings a little difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everywhere I go smells in a way that uh, is, is uh, distracting and sickening to me. I, I actually do get physically ill from the smell of coffee. And nothing against coffee drinkers. It's uh, I think most of that has to do with uh, my ADHD, which uh, means that I notice things a lot more than other people do. Uh, smells in particular are one of the things that people with ADHD are particularly prone to notice. And I'm definitely I'm not using uh, ADHD in the way that most people do. Oh, that's my ADHD kicking in. No, unless you've been to a professional and been diagnosed with ADHD, don't sit there and tell people you have ADHD just because you uh, got distracted once. That's uh, that's not what ADHD is. It's uh, a lot of different um, symptoms in the disorder. <laughs> and I know it's not... Uh, politically correct to say it's a disorder anymore. We're supposed to call it uh, um, mentally different or, or something like that. And it's, you know, I'm, I don't consider it a learning disability. I never had trouble learning in school. Um, what is a learning disability is dyscalculia, which I also have. Um, and that's that's one that will actually affect how you learn in school. But with the 
ADHD, it was always a matter of being engaged enough in school. I was just not interested in the subject most of the time, and as a result, my mind would wander onto other topics, other subjects that I was actually interested in. And I never really had trouble learning what was being taught in school. I had trouble uh, getting along with teachers. And that's one of the things that uh, I, I really, it, it really gets my gourd, um, uh, grabs my dragon, steals my goat. I don't know what uh, metaphor you want to use there. It, it makes me upset when people use ADHD like o OCD. You know, oh, that's my OCD. I have to clean up everything every day. Well, you probably just have good housekeeping habits. Uh, OCD is very different from good housekeeping habits. Uh, in fact, I've met uh, many OCD people who have very poor housekeeping habits, but the things that uh, get them are details that most people don't get caught up in. Like uh, when you leave the house and you aren't sure if you left the light on, so you have to unlock your door and go back in and check the light. And then you leave and you lock your door and then you're not entirely certain you lock the door so you grab the doorknob and you jiggle it again that's not OCD that's just normal second guessing yourself you know OCD is way more involved than that it's turning the light off and then back on and checking that the light bulb still works and then turning it off and back on and going through a ritual of repeating the same motions over and over again because literally your brain is functioning differently. It's uh, it's not letting you get past this one task. And people think that ADD is the same thing. ADHD and ADD are kind of the same thing in that if you, if you exhibit one trait once then you have it and that's not it at all. It's, it's very different. And yeah, I was medicated through school, uh, part of elementary school, and um, wasn't really medicated beyond that. But uh, as an adult, I I have sought uh, medication on a handful of occasions, and I can tell you there's a huge difference between <laughs> between being medicated and um, allowing my brain to just run free and, and cause its own chaos. And ironically, I find that when I'm not on my, uh, my Adderall, I sometimes don't feel as creative. When uh, I was younger, when I first started college, I, I got the nickname Random in one of my classes. And the reason was because I would frequently... Um, literally randomly, jump up from my desk, run around to the other side, and nobody knew what I was doing. In fact, uh, it, it was a fine art school, and a lot of students didn't want to sit next to me because, and this is college, this isn't like grade school, this is college, because I might get up and run around my desk. And in my mind, I was doing something completely logical, which was... Um, getting stuck in a problem and in, in fine art anybody who works on fine art knows exactly what I'm talking about it's it's a common thing but I would get up from the work and look at it from the other side and in this particular class the pieces we were working on were simply too big to just turn around and it was much easier and faster <laughs> to get up from the desk and walk around to the other side of it. But I was in a hurry. I was I was working quickly. We had a deadline. It was a, a class project that had to be completed during the class period. And uh, so I was, I was moving quickly when I did it. <laughs> and it really disturbed some people that uh, 
I was so completely unpredictable and random. But I don't find myself doing things like that anymore uh, in my old age. I've, I've settled down a lot. But I've also, I feel like I've lost a lot of creativity um, as a result of getting older. And not having been on my Adderall for a while is one of the contributors to, I think, I think, uh, one of the contributors to my um, lack of creativity as an adult. Let's see, where's this come out from? Right here. Now, some people might be watching me uh, do this and wondering why I, I do my curves so slow, I do my arcs so slow. And the reason is because I'm actually pulling my pen across it. And I can get a, a nice even line rather than, you know, if you're if you're drawing the same way that you write, you know, holding your pencil the way that you write, then it's much easier to get uh, uh, shakes and wiggles in to the art. But by pulling my pen, I'm moving my entire arm when I'm doing it. I can get a much better uh, arc. <laughs> than uh, I would typically otherwise get. And I'm not saying that that's a tip for anybody else to use. That is the way that I learned how to do it. And it's the way that I continue to do it because it does work for me. And a lot of times, uh, I still find myself doing this. I'll, I'll see an artist do something that is really cool and I'll try to emulate it, but I will try to emulate their motion, their um, their habit of holding the pencil, and how how they uh, make the mark. And particularly when I'm doing uh, digital art on my uh, on my tablet, I, I find myself very quickly seeing that I can't make the same lines that they make. And I get frustrated. That uh, I can't I can't work on on their level. And I shouldn't do that. And I know I shouldn't do that. I've I've been an artist long enough, and I've actually taught art a few times. Um, that I know I shouldn't be frustrated at that, but I still find myself just absolutely getting uh, completely frustrated that I can't do what uh, that person did. Which is one of the reasons why when I, uh, when I teach or even, even when I draw on, uh, on this channel, I try to let people know that you know, this, is, this is how I learned to do it and this is why it works rather than saying, this is the solution, you must do it this way. Because uh, your why something works might be completely different. And uh, like I mentioned with Howard Taylor, you know, he, he did not come from a fine art background. He came from a computer engineering background and uh, might have done some comics in school, so I mean, he has been drawing for a long time, longer than just his webcomic. But uh, he didn't really have that, that fine art influence that, uh, that I have. So the way that I draw, the way that I solve problems is very different from the way that he does it. I, I don't even think I could teach him how to do how to draw the way that I draw but that's perfectly okay because I know because I've tried that I can't draw the way that he draws let's uh, start well I've got some more I've got some more trim to put in let's uh, let's finish the trim before we go on to
all of the shadows. There we go. Yeah, I'll finish those shadows later. Um, what I want to do is get the rest of this cloak in. And that's going to be some big triangles. Actually, I think sometimes the uh, trim on the cloak is just solid red. I could have gotten away with that. Okay. Now, let's finish uh, indicating our shadows. And let's go ahead and block in some blacks. Actually, I've done pretty good today. I don't think I've moved my uh, canvas once. Haven't had to recenter the camera on my, what I'm drawing for a while. And did uh, did miss that. Let's go ahead and block in. I think I want to block in that hole area as black, leaving maybe a little bit of trim exposed. there. And then that can fade out into a uh, cross hatch. We'll get uh, this 
some of our little red triangles in here. and just refine this uh, gap right there. There we go. And I want to leave that little separation because this whole part is uh, going to be black as well. Big shadow here. Big shadow there, got it. Um, probably big shadow here. Let's get that a little bit thinner. Started to replay uh, Final Fantasy 1 a couple of months ago. My uh, niece and nephew somehow managed to talk their parents into getting a uh, Retro NES, SNES, sorry. Uh, <laughs> one of those little uh, plug and play TV video games that uh, just plugs into the TV and then they've got all the video games on board. And it looks like a classic SNES console, but it's tiny. And I say uh, they somehow talked their parents into getting it. Uh, I'm pretty sure their dad got it and then blamed it on the kids because he's. Uh, a little older. I He's not quite from my generation. He's younger than I am by quite a ways. But the nostalgia is real. It's still there. And I can understand that. So, uh, yeah, he got that. And the kids are just absolutely addicted to it. They love it. And I love watching them play. They're, they're little tiny kids and they're playing the game like pros. Uh, all these classic video games. <laughs> and uh, one of the games on there is Final Fantasy. And they brought it over one day and they left it here by accident because that's what little kids do. They lose all their toys. When they run out of toys, they lose mom and dad's toys. So, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, had a couple of days with the, uh, the SNES and I went down Nostalgia Road with that thing. And started to replay the Final Fantasy 1 series that was also on there. I don't think Final Fantasy 1 was originally on the SNES. I think it actually came uh, much sooner um, on the on the Famicom, the uh, uh, NES. But uh, man, that got that was really easy right off the bat, and then it got really, really hard, really fast. <laughs> there was this uh, one stage right at the very beginning. Well, I say very beginning. I was probably about four hours in, and all of a sudden, everything went from being um, super easy to barely survivable to there is no way you're getting through this with that group. <laughs> and, I mean, just all of a sudden, it was really fast that it happened. You, you, there was no time to adjust for it. 
couldn't change my party out, and I just could not get past that one stage. I spent probably uh, three or four days puzzling it out before I finally gave up. Um, mostly out of uh, they took their game back. <laughs> So, I couldn't play it anymore. And I think I'm getting to the end of what I can really do. I want to darken that up because that is a shadow that's inside of a garment. There we go. Um, kind of getting to the end of what I can what I can do with pen and ink. Um, There we go. So that's going to be it for uh, this Inktober 8th. This is my frail drawing. The frailest person in any party is always the cleric. Protect your cleric. <laughs> As the meme goes, nobody messes with the white mage. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I, well, I can do that a little bit now. Just give it a light pass over to uh, bring out a little bit more of the of the highlight from the paper. I. Uh, I think I have way more pencil on here than I have ink still. Oh, and I screwed up the shadow on the nose. I forgot to even do that. There we go. That's much better. Okay. And I think that's going to be it for today. I know I already said that about two minutes ago. Um, but this time I really mean it. <laughs> and obviously I am insincere as I pick up a pen to do one more thing. One more thing and one more thing. They, uh... They say, I say they, I had a teacher who once told me that art is never truly finished, it simply escapes. And I absolutely believe that. I don't think I've ever finished a piece of art. I have simply let it go. <laughs> if you truly love something, let it go. And if it comes back, the client didn't love it. There we go. Now I do I do have uh, regular gigs up on uh, Fiverr. If you wanted to uh, find me and make a request for a commission, you can uh, contact me directly. Uh, send me a DM on Twitch or on uh, what's the other one that starts with a T on Twitter. Um, I think I can be contacted through my, uh, through my YouTube page. Um, but yeah, uh, I do commissions. I do, oh, I forgot to sign it and I didn't clean up the bottom of the leg here.
There we go. That is fully signed, fully finished. Frail little white mage. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow for another Inktober drawing. Um, watch my YouTube channel. This should be up on there in a few hours. If you are watching this on the YouTube channel, then uh, I already got it back up. Uh, it's been taking me a while to get these up. I've been getting them up in the late evening, trying to get them up in the early afternoon so that uh, you can watch it on your lunch break. But uh, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again tomorrow.